asks its listeners to help out. This is Egton House, the home of BBC Radio 1. Recently, the station and its boss have come under fire because of three main reasons. Falling audience figures, the departure of some of the station's most famous DJs, and a confusion over their music policy. In the 12 months up until October 1994, Radio 1 lost 4.5 million listeners, leaving them with a national audience share of only 12%, compared to 22% in the last quarter of 1992. The spread of formulaic, yet highly competitive, independent local radio has played its part. But Radio 1 have been accused of losing their way and alienating their audience. In an effort to get a better idea of the needs of its listeners, Radio 1 have formed the Sound Advisors, a group of six listeners aged between 17 and 29, who present their ideas direct to Radio 1 management every three months. But why? We wanted some people who would spend a regular time listening to the station and then come and give us their views and it means that I can explain to them what's going on and they can give me help in, in shaping the future direction of the radio station. You can pay to have audience research done. Is this just simply a PR exercise? This is about getting a real tangible feel for what some Radio 1 listeners think about the output on a regular basis. Uh, they've asked me to make some changes, for example, which I've, I've been able to do and they've come back today to talk to me about what they think about those changes and whether they feel positive about them or negative about them. And there's no substitute for that kind of human dialogue. It's really good to hear straight from the horse's mouth what they think about it. When you switch on, like, um, to Lisa Anson, you can hear music. So I started listening to the program and, yeah, I've Bands like Oasis wouldn't be anywhere without Radio 1. And do you think that we're, we're getting it right in the daytime? Because obviously if the station is progressing, if you're getting new ideas, new people in, there's no reason why that shouldn't work. There's been a lot of talk about your music policy. Where do you stand? The music policy has been entirely misreported. What we've said is that Radio 1 is absolutely a contemporary music radio station. It's what people want us to be. It's hugely popular. We have 13.2 million listeners every week. That's more than double our nearest commercial rival. Uh, and yet it does all these things for, for new music and new artists. And that, to me, is a, a fantastic balancing act. Yes. What I didn't like about Radio 1 before was the DJs who were patronising, who were really old, and didn't know what they were talking about. But now with new DJs, things are going to get better because they know where they're coming from. I'm not planning any further changes at Radio 1. I want to make that quite clear. But what we have done in the last three months is to do some of the things that we talked to the sound advisors at, about at our last meeting. We were asked to take a few more risks in developing new presenters, and, and we were fortunate enough to bring Lisa Ianson to Radio 1. Again, that came out just of our thinking, but also of the thinking with the sound advisors. And so there's been a positive welcome for, for us having done those things over the last few months. What perhaps Matthew did do wrong is he changed things too quickly, but you can understand his impatience to do that. Now, if you listen to Radio 1, I really believe it's, it's sounding really good. We have to sound different. We can't sound like all the commercial stations. People say that when they listen to the independent local radio network, they hear familiar top 40 hits. When they listen to daytimes on Radio 1, they don't. Radio 1's got a different job to do from commercial radio. There are 150 commercial radio stations in the UK, mostly rotating the same few hits or classic oldies. We're broader than that. We've got broader minds and we expect our listeners to have broader minds. We've got to offer an alternative to commercial radio. Otherwise, we wouldn't deserve to be funded by public money through the licence fee. And that's what we do. But that's not to say you won't hear many hits and many classics on daytime on Radio 1. Of course you will, but you'll also hear the new artists who are making the hits of tomorrow. We have to, you know, be distinctive, be our own thing and be original. And that we are. And it's really getting exactly good. And that's why the audiences are going up again.